What is good y'all, it is Mr. Bradley and today I am back with another FL Studio on Mac video. This time taking a look at support for Apple Silicon. So currently I'm on a late 2020 M1 Mac mini and the improvement I've already seen this far is very, very noticeable. So I expect if you're on one of the newer M1 chips like the Macs or the Pro, then I'm sure the difference you'll see is a even better performance than what I've seen. So today we're going to go over two main things. Number one is running FL Studio in one of two ways, and that's either with or without Rosetta. And the second topic is taking a look at being able to run both supported and unsupported apps for the M1 chip. So right here, what we're looking at is um, a message image line put out regarding running FL Studio on Apple Silicon. So um, if you want more in-depth information, official information um, then you can take a look at that but otherwise let's get into the topic of the video so first thing you're going to want to do assuming that you've both downloaded and installed fl studio to run the program how i would recommend personally which is through rosetta that's going to allow you to run both supported and unsupported apps both vst and au versions if you choose um you're gonna want to go open a finder window go to applications like i've done and hover over the icon right click and hit get info and you're gonna want to make sure that this box is checked open using rosetta all right so let's do that real quick now i'm also going to take you guys through installing a plugin that is not supported for apple silicon and that is ample base so i've already downloaded and installed it the only thing we need to do is do what we normally do for installing plugins go to options manage plugins and find more plugins now while i do this um it's important to note the reason for opening fl studio with rosetta is so you can run those unsupported plugins otherwise um, if you try to open any programs um, or excuse me any plugins that aren't supported you're just going to get an error message and it's not going to be able to be found so yeah okay so this is the important part to know when you're using both supported and unsupported plugins like i've mentioned you'll notice a difference in optimization between the VST versions and the AU versions of those plugins. So if a plugin supports Apple Silicon, then you definitely want to use the VST versions of those plugins for the best efficiency and the most optimum performance. Um, if it's not supported like Ample Base, which I've just installed, then to the best of my knowledge, you can use either um, AU or VST, but supposedly um, AU versions, although they may take a little longer to load at the start, um, they should be less issues with bugs and crashing. But um, again, I can't 100% confirm that. That's just what I've read on different forums. All right, so we covered the topic of running FL Studio under Rosetta. Now let's take a look at running natively so that you can use all the supported plugins with the most optimal performance and the fastest load times and all that good stuff. So as I mentioned before, for opening using Rosetta, basically you just have to do the opposite. Same method applies, right click on the icon, get info, and you wanna make sure that this box is unchecked so you do not open the program using Rosetta. The only thing you really have to do is just wait for your favorite plugin companies to start pushing out updates for Apple Silicon support. But if you don't mind waiting for unsupported plugins to get updated and only using the list of supported plugins we have thus far, then running FL Studio natively sounds like it's for you. That pretty much concludes this video and any updates that are made to Apple or FL Studio, I will try to cover later in a future video if we do get those updates. But please, if anyone has any tips, tricks, suggestions on making sure FL Studio runs 
smoothly in either the rosetta or without rosetta please let us know in the comments and i'll see y'all soon peace mm -hmm.